Thank you so much, Ali. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for giving me this opportunity to come in front of you and uh, you know discuss about something which is very important, uh, which makes or breaks uh, any startup, and that is making long-term business plan. So I am Dr. Saira, and I am CEO and founder of MedIQ, which is uh, smart healthcare. And um, the reason why we call it smart healthcare because it's trying to use technology to remove inefficiencies in healthcare system. So uh, before we you know, start this uh, session, we all know that approximately about 80 to 90% of the startups, they fail. Usually in the, within the three years of the formation, um, so what's the reason behind it? Can anyone from the audience uh, let me know? You can write the answers in the in the you know in the box. You can you know speak if you can if Ali allows uh, the speaker to be on turned on. Yeah, there's one answer. So the, the answers which are coming are poor planning, uh, not clearly mentioning their revenue stream in a country like Pakistan, political instability, economic tensions, lack of innovation, lack of dedication and patience. Um, lack of planning or funds. So if you sum it together, so yes, sub cheeses you have starting from, uh, you know, lack of patience, lack of clarity, not having enough innovation, not having the financials uh, properly allocated or not tracking the financials, but do they form? Basically they all come under the topic, which is the business plan. So when I talk, when people talk about business plan, they usually confuse the business plan with a financial plan. While, you know, most, uh, as we all know that business plan is much more comprehensive uh, document than a financial plan. Obviously financial plan becomes a part of the business plan uh, because, um, you know, whatever you, can, you cannot measure and watch, it cannot be improved. So, a business plan and a financial plan actually measures and uh, and improves uh, because you're keeping an eye on the numbers and the other objectives of the company. So it's many a times, you know, why uh, the companies fail because they have good ideas, but putting that good idea into implementation is what is missing, proper implementation. And proper implementation without a business plan cannot happen. So what exactly is a business plan and what is it composed of? So business plan is a written document which defines the objective of your business. It's very really, it's really important to be clear what is the objective and the goal of the business you're doing and how are you going to attain that? So this means okay, it's the document, this document is going to have uh, your vision, the budget, what is the mark, target market which you're approaching, who are your competitors, who, who are your collaborators? Uh, what are the what is what sort of money is required and any you know risks which needs to be mitigated before it happens? So all this needs to be so whatever points which you raised actually they all sum up together to find a business plan. And the business plan again, as as you can see, when you write a business plan. Uh, it should always be a very well articulated document because usually you share with investors. So it, it should have a objective summary. It should have, first of all, the reason why the business is being performed. For example, uh, so if someone is doing, let's suppose, let's take example of, uh, you know, someone is doing uh, marketing, a video marketing. So why are you doing that video or content marketing? What's the intention behind it? So it should be very clearly defined in it. Then who are the, the market analysis? So who, what is the market just me up here your product has go bishne jare? How big is the market? Who are your competitors? Well, what sort of an organizational structure do you need in order to achieve the goals or the objectives to have that 
the business objectives met. Then obviously financials play a very important role. And how do you take your product or your uh, content to the audience, just know who consume, can I just know who utilize can I? So these are the important uh, elements which should be kept in mind while developing a business plan. Usually, uh, you know, uh, there's always uh, a long-term business plan which is then divided or you know, uh, it's divided into into small uh, bits and pieces like small uh, like an immediate. Uh, term planning, like a midterm planning, and a long term planning. Because how do you eat an elephant? It's by breaking it or cutting an elephant into small bits and pieces. But, and that is how you achieve your objectives. So, just like you know, uh, eating an elephant, you have bigger goals, bigger objectives, and long term uh, objectives to achieve. But in order to have that long term business plan, you first need to define your small, short term business plan. And your short-term business plan usually is for a year or so. This may you document the processes which need to be improved, and this, uh, you the numbers which need to be achieved initially to show the proof of the concept, the MVP, and then the, you know these these uh, short-term plans they become the stepping stones to reach the mid-term goals. And mid-term goals usually you know are the ones which then lead to the long-term goals. So they, they, the midterm goals are based on usually the finding of the short term goals or the planning, and you try to improve the processes based on uh, your uh, short term goals. And then you define your larger uh, or the bigger objectives, which are usually the long term plans, which are for around three to five years. This may you reach to a certain stage which you want to achieve, and the processes are well established and you are making revenues or or either you're making revenues or and, and flourishing or you know you are at the end of the company or the company is about to die so the executive summary is you know just like any um, like just like any executive summary should summarize each and every point to have never discussed care we're starting from the company's overview what is the company uh, company's objective why was the company formed what is the market how big is the market? Who are the competitors in the market? What is your business strategy? How will you sell that product which you are having or a service which you're having in that market and the financial projections because uh, the numbers are important. So all these factors should be kept in mind while writing the executive summary of a business plan. So, sorry, you know, there are certain messages uh, which are there. So. So what are the you know different business concepts? Why did you make a certain company? Usually the business concepts are based on a certain innovative idea or maybe an idea which has proven to be successful in some other market. market problem exists or use So it may not be something very innovative, but it's some it might be something which is needed in the current market. So it's basically what is your business concept is what do you want to sell and why do you want to sell and why do you want to have something disruptive to change the way the, the current business is performed in the country or in a certain society or in a certain segment of the society. It can be as huge as like a global problem or it can be a small uh, thing as which can be very hyper local or you know even limited to a certain city. Market defining the market is really important because you should know what your product is is for. What are the type of the customers who are going to use your uh, product? Up us market ka kitna share lena chare or us share ko lene ke liye how are you going to position your uh, product and the services? What should be the pricing strategy based on the market itself and already existing uh, customers? Or, or already existing competitors in the market who are selling in that market before you? And how would you com communicate the benefits of your product or the unique selling points of your product uh, to the customers? What will be the distribution channels for that uh, product? So all this should be a part of your market analysis. 
and don't think them that these are the points which which look good in theory but actually till you define these all these points uh, in a very clear precise manner you cannot achieve your business objectives and it's just not the financing part of uh, of any plan or financing part of any business which makes a difference but it's also about how are you doing the business and for that you first need to do your market analysis obviously the market analysis hamesha said this is uh, a, because you are a part of an accelerator you would have uh, you, you have your previous sessions as well so you should know what is the total addressable market for example i was talking about making a video so what is the total population who for example a subscription based video so what is the total market which is existing for any type of video usko aap total addressable apni market ko identify karenge usme se aap us how much of that market is your service addressable market you will ident identify that and then you will see how much of that market you are going to achieve the form so it should be realistic enough when you you know one of the reasons of failures of any business is that they show a very huge addressable total addressable market and they try to achieve a very big portion of that service of uh, of, of the tam uh, in the form of uh, their som while which looks too good on the paper but in actual it's not easy to achieve it for example i, I remember that, that when we were developing our business plan so we initially thought that it's it's going to be very easy to make around 400000 uh, dollars in the first year while when we uh, once the the year passed we were only able to achieve 100000 dollar and that was already communicated to me by one of my mentors ki ji aap dikha to rahi hai paper pe it looks achievable as well but even if you make like 80000 dollars i'll be very very uh, happy for the company so it's actually the, the the reason why i'm saying this that people that yes investors do want to see big numbers on the paper they want to to have you know um, numbers which look glamorous and too big but you should be very realistic in your um, in your targets and what you're going to achieve because in the end you will be accountable for whatever you have um, promise to your investors or you have promise to your employees even this is what is going to be achieved so if you set your assumptions or if you set your targets unrealistic this is one of the reasons uh, why the companies fail as well so usually jo hai log ek gut feeling ke upar tam sam and som bana rahe hote hain while there is always a, a way of calculating tam sam and som and it de depends on the if you have a bottom up approach so it depends on the annual contract value and the annual contract value can be easily calculated by the number of the current customers into you know if you multiply it by average sales price and based on your acv or the annual current uh, contract value you can calculate your tam sam and som very easily and that gives you the realistic uh, picture of uh, of your overall market rather than having assumptions that pakistan is a population of 220 million people and you know about 50% of the people watch uh, uh, youtube or or social media channels and i'm going to have about 25% of that market instead of making these sort of assumptions if you have your annual contract value and use that value to develop your uh, your targets is going to be much more realistic and much more achievable obviously when you have your uh, your business plan and your with and your uh, objectives and the goals and the products uh, well defined then you need to have a team in place uh, which jiski uh, jiski skills or capacities should match the requirement of that product to be sold in a proper way so there should be a management team uh, or the founding management team who's right from the beginning owns that business and how is the working structure how will the teams work together interact with each other and usually in startups there are no uh, isolated teams they are like a mesh uh, there is a meshwork of teams or is like cross functional teams who work with each other and later on at later stages uh, they get converted into more departments or the verticals in which they are working 
So, iske alawa ye ke you should have a clear identification of what skills are missing from your current team, and how are you going to get those skills fulfilled uh, while doing your business. It can be through hiring of the people, or it can be through you know short-term augmentation of resources from some external resource or some external uh, you know provider as well. Uh, a person, a, a personal plan is an important aspect of your business plan. Marketing plan, obviously, it depends on what sort of a product which you have, what sort of demographics are you going to target, what, where, what is the, the gender you are going to target, what's the age group which you are targeting, what sort of uh, literacy level they have, what is the size of that market, how are you going to reach this market, is the product a, a need of the market or you have to create the need for that product because people don't know whether the, such a product exists or not. It's just like, you know, uh, I always give this example that two salesmen were sent to, uh, to an island where pe uh, people were not wearing any shoes. And both of them came and gave a different perspective to their boss. And then the first one said, people on that island are not wearing any shoes. This means there's no requirement of shoes on that island. So we cannot uh, sell shoes there. While on the other hand, the other person came back and said, okay, I think they don't know what shoes are. So there's a big opportunity for us to tell them what shoes that what shoes are and how comfortable they are and how can it make their, how, how can they make the life of, uh, of the people so easy? So it has, to be very clearly defined whether there's a market need and how are you going to address that market need. So it can it can have different people that can have different uh, perspective about the market needs. So it should be realistic and it should be, you know, accord, it should be, you know, checked by having a product market fit and seeing whether your pro product uh, fits the market or it has to be, uh, you know, tailored to the market or, or maybe it needs a pivot to meet the market need which you have uh, which, for the market which you're serving. Financial plan plays an important role because it's about the numbers. So you should clearly define what are the outcomes which you want to achieve and then work it backwards to see what sort of capital requirement which you have for uh, doing that business. So, and then also have certain, uh, you know, uh, assumptions or uh, you know, what if analysis to see okay, what sort of problems can happen and what's, uh, what impact are those problems going to have on your financial plan. Have the impact of those choices on the revenue. Check the impact of those choices on the revenue. Okay, what if something happens, what's going to happen with the revenues? Because till you, you know, uh, till as, a, as I already said, that till you measure what you're going to achieve, you're not going to be successful because what cannot be measured cannot be achieved as well properly. Uh, and then have a buy-in of your investors on that financial plan, because mostly that's the part where the investors or if you're, if, if you're bootstrapping or whatever you're doing to bring in the money, that's the part which most of the people are interested. And that's the reason there's always a confusion that uh, people you know, take a business plan as as same as the financial plans anonymously use or interchangeably use or while while we have seen that financial the business plan is much more than a financial plan um, i'm sure you must be having a separate uh, component or a separate module for financial planning because uh, financial planning itself is a, is a big topic and requires you to understand different parts of a financial plan. So what is an income statement? What is a balance sheet? How, what are the different business ratios which you're, which you're trying to achieve? The sales forecast, the cash flow projections, the assets and the liabilities, the income projections. So these are different parts of a financial plan or how do you determine them? Uh, I'm, I'm going to slightly touch them, but uh, financial planning itself is a, is a huge uh, subject which needs uh, a detailed session on financial planning. But two important things which you should uh, keep in mind while uh, developing any financial plan is the income statement and the balance sheet. So what is an income statement? 
So income statement tells how your business is performing over a specific period of time. Uh, it's or what's the profit or the loss which the business is making in a specific time, usually over three months it's calculated. So how you, it's also called PNL. So many a times you must be you must be hearing the word. So what's the PNL of the of the business? So what is the PNL usually comprises of the cost of sales or cost of goods. Uh, how how are you going to sell the product? उसके जो उसको product को sell करने के लिए क्या खर्चा आएगा? What are the operating expenses like rents and utilities? How are you going to earn the revenues? Is it going to be a single revenue stream product? or you are going to have multiple revenue streams just in case one revenue stream fails then you still have you know uh, revenues coming from the other stream so what's the amount of the total uh, net profit or loss which is also known as you know uh, as a gross margin so till you define the gross margin the revenue streams the operating costs uh, the cost of selling the goods or the or the service you will not be able to have a proper business plan and you will you won't be successful because you don't know your numbers while on the other hand the balance sheet which again forms a very important aspect of any financial uh, plan or later on a business plan uh, tells you where you are standing right now uh, instead of you know the previous performance or the future projections it shows what are your assets what are your liabilities what is what is the shareholder equity so it gives you a clear picture of where you are right now today as uh, of now in terms of your assets or liabilities while well, income statement tells you uh, something which has happened over a specific period of time in the in the past for example 3 months 1 month uh, while balance sheet is your current status business metrics jo ke fingertips pe hone chahiye kisi bhi uh, founder ke ya start startup ke and when whenever an investor or any person who is interested in your business ask you so you you should have them on the fingertips especially the growth rate so it 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 measures what your business how much the revenue or the sales of your company is growing in a, over a specific period of time so it can be uh, you know your order growth rate it can be your revenues growth rate it can be your uh, sales growth rate so it, but it should be well defined and then unit economics have recently become very important because previously it was all about burn how much are you burning now after the recent uh, financial uh, crunch and the deteriorating macroeconomic conditions the unit economics are becoming more and more important because it, they tell you how much revenues are you going to make or what is the cost of a particular smallest piece of your business so if it's about content marketing so if one unit of a vid of one unit is made is it going to be posit, uh, making uh, money or is it going to cost you loss so don't run a business on negative unit economics because if your unit economics are negative irrespective of whatever you do you are not going to be successful ever so this is one of the metrics jo ke ab it is the most uh, important metrics and, pe and the people are focusing on this metrics now instead of instead of looking at just the growth rate or uh, the burn rate or uh, you know or you know uh, how quickly you are expanding so the unit economics are one of the most important is one of the most important metrics which should be measured and then obviously what's the customer lifetime value you bring on a customer by spending 10 but those keep puri lifetime value jo hai wo agar 11 dollars hai then then you're doing something wrong you know so the customer lifetime value is an important aspect and it tells you ke aap ek ek customer jab tak aapke sath rahega to wo kitna aapko jo hai wo generate karke dega revenue kitni value aapke liye generate karega uska kitni der tak uska relationship rahega for example in case of a uh, in case of for example you are you are buying spectacles from a shop till the spectacles are broken or the glasses are broken the customer is not never going to come back so this means that customer lifetime value is is you know is uh, is not going to be uh, is not going to be big enough well on the other hand if you're you're a food chain then the 
then the probability of that customer coming to you again and again and spending uh, money on your uh, product or on your application is a higher than the customer lifetime value increases. So, and with the customer lifetime value comes a, a very important metrics, which is what is the cost of customer acquisition? So if the cost of customer acquisition is high, or you know, you even if you acquire customer uh, faster by spending more, if the customer retention is low or the customer loyalty or your churn rate is zyada hai, then again, this is a danger sign because you will be mainly focusing on acquiring the customers at a higher cost rather than moving towards profitability. Uh, so this sort of a business, just my customer acquisition cost is very high and the churn rate is really low. Again, you know, rings uh, bell KG, something needs to be done about this. Then again, the net income, and, uh, it shows a total profit a company generates after deducting all the expenses. It should be on your fingertip. So what's, what's your net income for the last one month? You should be able to tell that. What was the net, net income for the last one year? It should be on your fingertips. Uh, don't say that I'll, let me get back to you. It should be as a, as a founder, as a business owner, you should know what was the net, in, net income of your business. And then the, uh, the net profit margins, because ultimately this is what we all strive for or we want to achieve through a business. It, because a net profit margin shows the, profit, the, the profitability of a company or, you know, an, or the net income as a percentage of the revenue, which you're actually taking home or which you are giving back to your uh, investors. And working capital, do you have enough money or enough funds available to run your day-to-day -day operations. If you don't have enough working capital and you keep on spending more and more, then uh, you're you know, soon going to run out of money. And usually the working capital is ca calculated by taking out you know, your li current liabilities from your current assets. So ensure that you have enough working capital to run your business uh, for on day-to-day -day basis. So these are some of the metrics which should be kept in mind when you're developing a financial plan and uh, uh, and focus on these metrics. Uh, uh, I, I can't emphasize more on this because most of the founders, they forget about these uh, important KPIs or metrics and they are mainly concerned about, you know, how much you can sell and how fast you can grow without realizing the cost at which they are growing and without realizing that what was going to be the unit economics, what is going to be the lifetime value of a customer. Um, again, then, you know, uh, you should have a proper business strategy, make sure that your, uh, your, you know, your operational plan is well defined. So you have a product, you have a service, you have the money available, but how will you make sure that your product or the service reaches the people uh, in a seamless manner? So that should be properly defined. What are going to be your distribution channels? How many people will be required to carry out those, that business? Wh whom are you going to involve uh, for supply chain? So all this should be properly defined already in your business plan, uh, well uh, defined well in time and thoroughly thought through to make sure that your business plan uh, is, is a document which is actually guiding your business and making sure that it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's defined in a way uh, that it's going to make your business successful. So all these small little details should be there right from beginning to make sure that all your operations are streamlined for the long-term success as well. So, Thinking about a business plan, there are two ways of looking at it, or the two different thought processes, or you know, uh, or there is always a debate on two things. And people say that some people say that making immediate short-term profits are more important compared to making a long-term sustainability uh, their objective or the goal. So. What, what do you think? So are making, do you think that prioritizing short-term profits are more important or do you think that long-term sustainability is uh, more important? So what's, what, what are your ideas on that? Um, please share your ideas on this.
I have seen one answer. Everyone is writing uh, long term sustainability. Yeah, but someone has written that achieving short term goals ultimately lead to long term sustainability, short term profits to to get long term goals. So exactly, I think you have to have short term profits in order to achieve the long term goals. Reason being, ke if you see that you're not able to make your products successful in a shorter period of time, the long term goals are more are, are going to be difficult to be achieved. And secondly, you also have to make sure that you show certain results to the stakeholders and they are able to see that your product is, is profitable uh, in, to achieve the long-term goals. So it should, one should not be tilted towards a specific uh, side, but should make a combination of both of them, that you have your short-term goals achieved or the profits attained in a short-term uh, period in order to achieve a long-term sustainable uh, uh, business, which is uh, generating profits in the end as well because it should be the scaling up of the short term thing over a long period of time. So when you're pre preparing a long term planning, having a vision is the most important thing. So what is the vision which you have? Is it about, you know, uh, so anyone uh, can, the businesses who are present here, can they please, uh, you know, uh, share their vision? What do they have? Uh, why did they start a certain business or why are they focusing on a certain problem and why do they want to solve it? Anyone? to streamline the haphazard operations of real estate industry. Um, my business vision is to have transparency in B2B e-procurement market and mitigation uh, and mitigating corruption. Not just providing customers with quality makeup, but also creating opportunities for women in the market. Empower empowering MSMEs through e-commerce. If you work short time, short term, we have complete long term planning with, without haphazard. Right. Leveraging technology to improve the quality and accessibility of secondary education in, in Pakistan. So vision is usually a broader, uh, it's the overall uh, broader uh, thing which you want to achieve through your business. For example, uh, Improving, this is some, someone has written that, you know, okay, empowering M, uh, MSMEs through e-commerce to achieve what? What do you want to achieve through your, uh, through your vision, you know? Like through, by empowering SME, SM, MSMEs, do you want to have them uh, be more profitable or to have a, a lot larger customer base? Yeah. So it should be very clear about your vision. What do you ultimately want to achieve? Um, similarly, you know, uh, yeah, so by, to streamline the haphazard operations of real estate industry. So what do you want to achieve by streamlining the haphazard operations of real estate industry? Make them more profitable, make them more efficient, or make them uh, deliver their product in a shorter period of time. So it, it all depends on what do you want to achieve. So your vision is important so that you understand why you are doing a certain product or a service to, to what you want to achieve in the end. So for example, if profitability, it should be written or should be the efficiency 
uh, which you want to achieve, it, it should be clearly spelled out. If you want to improve the transparency, it should be spelled out because you no know, later on just steps in order to achieve that, that will come out in the vision, uh, in, the, in the mission, that how are you going to achieve the vision which you are going to have? So your vision should be to improve the profitability of the real in the state industry. How? By streamlining the haphazard operations of the real industry. Yeah, kisi ne baat ki MSMEs ki. MSME, yeah, it's, it's a difficult word to pronounce. So what do you want to do by, uh, by, by empowering MSMEs? What are you doing going to do? Like, are they going to make more money? Are they going to be more profitable? Are they going to get more customers? Through e-commerce, uh, is it going to be the outreach which is going to, uh, to, uh, to be better? So it, you should be very clear while defining the vision so that you know what are the steps or the mission which you want to uh, later on define in order to achieve your vision. Um, and in order to achieve your vision, obviously setting up the goals is the most important aspect. And we all know about SMART goals, that they should be achievable, they should be measurable, relevant, and time-bound. Anything which is not measurable and which is not time-bound can never be achieved. And obviously, as we already uh, previously discussed, that in order to achieve long-term goals, bigger goals, you need to break them down into smaller goals or the short-term goals by you know, cutting an elephant into small, shorter, smaller pieces. So that's how you eat an elephant. The risk assessment is an important aspect. Someone, someone told about, uh, someone wrote about the macroeconomic uh, conditions or instability in Pakistan. So this is one of the important risks in a, in a market like Pakistan. So how are you going to mitigate that risk? It's not only a problem with Pakistan, it's a problem with many of the emerging countries or emerging economies that political instability. So political instability is, a, is an important risk. So how are you going to mitigate that important risk? It should be a part of the plan which you're making, business plan. That if the political instability happens, or if you're trying to uh, you know, raise funds, what, what is gonna happen? This, is, this should already be part of your business plan so that you know that it can happen, it happens, and it can affect the way you're going to operate or you're going to get the funding. And then how do you monitor the implementation of your business? Uh, because many a times people just want to grow and grow without measuring what they are grow how they are growing. So monitoring each and every step, having your well-defined KPIs, having a system in place which can measure those KPIs and tell you the status of your company is important. So how many customers acquired? How many, what was the increase in the number of the customers uh, month on month? How were the sales? What is the growth in the sales compared to the previous month? So this all should be measured and you know, broken down, sliced and diced to ensure that whatever you are doing, it's, uh, it is giving you exact picture of your, uh, of your business. Because I have, what I have seen is that many of the founders, they don't focus on the KPIs and don't, and don't go into the nitty and gritty of the business. In fact, just look at the, at the, at the, at the you know, the top numbers and uh, don't go into the depth of the, the situation. While it is extremely important to go into the depth of the numbers, because numbers are gonna tell you whether you are going in the right direction or you are heading towards a trouble. So, and it, I think it's, it's, there's no rocket science in developing a, a good business plan. As long as you have a, your clearly defined vision, your clearly defined objective, thorough analysis of your market, how big is your market, what, who are the competitors, what, are, what is your strength, what are your weaknesses? How are you going to utilize the opportunities uh, present in the market? What are the threats to your business? If you already know that and you have thought through them uh, well, then you're going to be successful in, your, uh, in achieving your long-term business plan. And you have, but ownership of your long-term business plan is very important. So this means involving the whole, the, all of the stakeholders uh, in your business, starting from the one who is funding your business 
or even if it's if it's you or your family who is involved in the business the buy in should be there you should yourself be convinced that this is the business plan which is going to make my product successful and the key stakeholders also include your employees the people who are going to deliver uh, the business for you so buy in of the of the from the top tier down to the uh, to, to the bottom tier is should be there so that uh, expectations are clear expectations are known and people also know what they have to do in order to achieve your long term business plan then obviously having as a i can't em emphasize more on this subject that please define your targets which are achievable and which are realistic because we may, sometimes you know uh, we become over optimistic or we think that uh, because the product is good or because the service is something which is needed so it's it's going to automatically sell no well, it's affected by so many factors uh, that you have to make sure that what if any of those factors goes wrong what what is going to be the effect on the business so please do have your targets to be realistic and flexible as well so that you can change them according to the situation which is there that is the reason they always say that there is no initially the business there is no fixed business plan or a financial plan uh, for a startup the financial plan keeps on changing sometimes on three monthly basis sometimes on six monthly basis sometimes even on monthly basis depending on how you are performing or how how is the market going or what are the macroeconomic conditions or what are the factors who are affecting the market right now Allo allocate enough resources to achieve your business uh, objectives because trying to set higher targets without allocating enough resources but not overspending is also very important so allocate the resources strategically where they are important develop action plans break your larger goals into smaller goals and smaller goals into small little tasks and the action plans in order to achieve your longer long term business plan and if you don't monitor and evaluate your progress and you know evaluate the progress of your action plans again the business is not going to uh, do well and you know keep on regularly reviewing your business plan as i said before business plan and the financial plans is it's not a is not a one time activity which is done it's something which needs to be regularly monitored it should be updated every time it should be communicated to the stakeholders whenever you change it to have the better buy in and it should be more realistic keeping in view the situation which is through which the company is growing going or growing or um, you know uh, the, the environment around the company which is affecting the company so now after all this uh, i think what do you think is the most important critical factor which can determine or which determines uh, the success of a company and you should keep in mind that important factor while developing your long term business plan any any uh, views on this so what's the, the key factor target audience and their needs target market vision and goals and resource allocation anyone else achievable and measurable targets customer understanding need of the product adaptability to change target market stakeholder requirement gap fulfillment so most of the people are talking talking about you know the customer need and the target audience well in my opinion in my humble opinion or whatever i have seen is that the most important thing is the vision which makes you disrupt the market which makes you 
think about doing things in a different way. If you are really clear about what you want to do, if you know what, what your vision is, where you want to go, and how do you want to go, then you, know, uh, then you define your goals right, then you have your financials defined properly, then you keep on tracking uh, your uh, progress well. So it's basically the vision, if the vision is clear, if you really know what you want to achieve, then the rest of the things start you know, falling into place. For example, if you talk about Amazon, Amazon case study pe bahut sare log baat kar rahe hote hain. So what started as a, it's actually started as a book selling product, uh, book selling platform, but now it's the biggest e-commerce platform uh, with, uh, with its worth in trillions of dollars. But the, what was the vision? The vision was to have delighted customers. The focus was, the vision was to have, to delight the customers in every possible way. So the customers should be delighted through the services provided by the platform. So in order to have delighted customers, they ensure that they provide low cost, uh, low prices to the customer, they provide convenience to the customer and have a wider selection of the products which they can provide to the customer. So starting as a bookshop, as a book platform, they are now selling almost everything under the sky to their platform. But the idea was, the vision was to have satisfied, delighted customers. So I'll, I think, stop here, uh, just uh, you know, summarizing my, uh, summarizing my uh, session in three bullet points. That long-term planning plays a very pivotal role in the success of any business and making that success uh, sustainable. Uh, setting strategic goals is very important. Always make sure that you make the strategic choices and try to bridge the gap between the current state and the future of the business. And that can only be achieved if you know your goals and you set your direction right and make strategic choices. And be ready for everything and anything because if you're not ready for everything or anything, then you are bound to fail because if you, if you fail to prepare, then you are preparing to fail. Thank you. Now I'm open for question and answers. Thank you. Uh, someone has written, thank you for such a nice presentation. It was really knowledgeable. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any queries, I would love to answer them. Someone has said that uh, I don't want, I'm not taking names here, that 90% of the startups fail, then how should we convince investors to invest in our startup? As they came, I said 90% of the startups fail because they don't have well-defined long-term business plan. So if you have your business plan well-defined, which means that you should have, do you have a proper vision? You know, how are you going to achieve your vision? What are the finances which are required? How, how are you going to spend those finances? What sort of a team do you need to have in place in order to achieve your objectives? What are going to be the marketing and distribution channels? What is the result which you want to achieve in the short term and the long term, then the investors will invest in you. But first you have to be clear yourself. So if you're clear yourself, then you can convince the investor to invest on, in your product. And secondly, believe in your product. You know, 
if you yourself uh, a believer that your product is solving something uh, a, something unique and you're, it's giving uh, a solution which is not existing before or it is solving something which is a big need of the market then the, if you are convinced then the investors will also can be convinced and you know the investors also know that when they are investing at an early stage the, the probability of the failure is high that is the reason that initially the valuations are are on the you know uh, are lower compared to the businesses who are more successful so the the chances of having a pre seed or seed uh, stage investment failing is higher compared to the later stage uh, businesses so this is the life uh, cycle of any business uh, but if as i said if you're prepared well then you will be doing well and your investors will be convinced so now i think i have missed few questions here in between So um, someone has written, do you have business plan templates uh, that you can share with us? Uh, the business plan templates are available. Uh, we can share the business plan templates with you as well. So if I can have, uh, you know, uh, your email, I can share with you. But important part is that templates are there for you to put your thoughts in. Till you're clear about what you want, get the garbage in, garbage out. If you're, you're not yourself conv convinced what do you want to achieve through your business plan, or if you're not clear enough what you want to achieve through your business plan, then template is not going to help you. So first of all, try to put down your business plan according to the headings which you, I have given to you. So what is the vision, as I said, what is the problem which you are solving, what is the target market, what are the numbers, financials. So, so if you put them down, uh, pen them down and put them uh, even in, you know, in a unstructured format and later on put them in a structured format, it will work for you. Formats can be shared with you, not at all an issue. I can, if you can have your, um, you know, the contact IDs. So, uh, Someone has asked, how do I balance short-term goals with long-term goals in my business plan? So what are, and what are the funding options for implementing a long-term business plan? See, you always, you know, when, when you, what's, the, uh, when, what's in your head, what you want to achieve, you automatically work it backwards and, you know, bring it to a point where you see, okay, this is, what I want to achieve in one year, right? So, जब आप larger vision को छोटे scale scale पे लेके आते हैं, तो आप automatically आपका जो है वो short term vision जो है वो long term vision के साथ align हो जाता है. और funding जो है, I, I would suggest that in order to have a product which is which it appeals to the investors as well, try to you know raise or from your friends and family first. Try to self-fund yourself as long as possible, even if you're able to scale at a shorter, at a smaller level. Because, you know, once you have put in your own efforts and when you have, you know, once you have shown to the world that your product is good enough to be invested and you have, you know, skin in the game, then the, the probability of other people investing or funding increases. And there are funding options available now, multiple uh, funding options available from different uh, accelerators as well, from, uh, you know, I would, again, the funding source is your friends and family members and your own savings, which can later on get you better valuations, can give, uh, and without dilution or without, you know, uh, uh, losing the power of making decisions from your hands. So, so if you work on the funding options, depending on whether you are, you are an impact business, you are, a business which is solving a certain problem, then you can find the funding options accordingly. How to get better with the numbers? That is the one which I struggle the most with. This is also exactly what I faced initially uh, when I started my business as well. So it's, you have to put down everything. You have to look at each and every number, go in a structured way. 
define your KPIs, you know, because KPIs, till you, till you don't define them, you won't be able to measure them. So the best way to get better with the numbers is to write down, write down uh, what you want to achieve. How are you going to achieve? How, what are, how are you going to measure the progress, the KPIs? So KPIs are the most important things, the key performance indicators. If you have defined your key performance indicators well, you will get better with your numbers as well. And when you define your KPIs, as I told you, that some of the important KPIs are, uh, for example, what is the gross profit margin? What is the customer acquisition cost? What are the unit economics? If you basic things, if you properly define them, if you start to measure them, you will get better with the numbers and you'll see how uh, your business is going in the right direction. Our company's vision is to have satisfied customer, not by just providing them with authentic and original products, but by giving them easy returns. Well, is it a clear vision? Uh, I don't know about your product, so I can't say ke ye kya hai, whether it's a good vision or not, because how are you going to uh, do it? Is it an e-commerce platform or is it an, it can be customer satisfaction, but for what, you know, like for education, for health, for consumer goods, for, uh, so you need to define what, what segment you are serving, what is the problem which you're solving. Right. Uh, and I'm Kamran, mature companies have a life cycle. If they are in, are in the mature stage, so after all, they have the they decline, have a growth potential. If they succeed, so there will be a high return for. I agree with you. Uh, mature companies, they can mature companies. They have exit plans as well. This have usually any company which is formed or any business which is started without having the exit plan in mind first, then it's, then you are not actually planning well or your business plan is not well defined. Because starting a business without knowing how you are going to exit uh, means that you have not well th thought through what your business would be like or exit are you going to have an IPO? Are you going to be acquired? Are you want, do you want to have a merger? Do you want to acquire certain businesses and then, you know, uh, sell it? So this is important. So exit strategy is important, whether you are a mature company or you are a startup. Um, Dr. Sara, as you mentioned early, early stage startups are our high risk uh, investments. So when it comes to failure, even after funding, uh, so I just want to clear my mind, why VCs in our country discourage sustainable bootstrap companies. I'm, I slightly disagree with that, that the VCs in the country discourage sustainable bootstrap companies. Um, when I started my company, I didn't raise uh, my first uh, funding round jab ke maine usko raise karna shuru kiya tha jab meri pehli jab meri traction 300000 customers pe pahunch gayi thi i think the vcs now they understand that product which is sustainable uh, product jisme skin in the game ho jisme aapki traction ho aur logon ne apne paise laga ke usko build kiya ho they they are better products to uh, to invest in now a problem ye aata hai ke you know, there are certain hot segments uh, and the fear of missing out in the investors that if they don't invest in that particular segment, they're going to miss out. So, for example, there was a time when e-commerce was, you know, very much in. Then became came the, the time of, you know, 10 minutes delivery, five minutes delivery. It, you know, it also, you know, finished. I always, as a health tech company, always face this issue that them that people never found my business, though it was sustainable and unit economics were there, it, they never found it as attractive as an e-commerce business or as a fintech company. So there, there will always be an investor bias, but if you go to the people who are investor for that particular segment, for example, health tech investors are different from fintech investors. You know, not every investor is for you. 
सो इफ यू नो किसको अप्रोच करना है और किसके पास जाना है एंड यू डू योर होमवर्क एंड सी कि उसने पहले किस किस बिजनेस में इन्वेस्ट किया हुआ है तो ये आपके लिए बेहतर होगा बिकॉज यू विल सी दैट दोज वीसीज विल बी मोर इंटरेस्टेड रादर देन अप्रोचिंग यू नो अप्रोचिंग एवरी वी सी सो गो फॉर चेक दे पास हिस्ट्री सी वे दे हैव इन्वेस्टेड and then approach them i'm sure that if you approach the right investors they will have an interest if your product is uh, sustainable and bootstrapped okay cosmetic e-commerce tick the uh it please highlight this business plan for product and services need to be very or it can all together be under the same company see um, there is no one stop there's no you know uh, one solution which fits all so every business plan is different from the other business plan but usually if a company is selling products it's not selling services or maybe if it's selling a product wo after sale services uski de rahi hoti hai so it can it can be an outcome of after the sales of that product so it will be like uh, one of the revenue streams and it can be brought in together under the same company's uh, business plan it all depends on you know how do you project your business or what do you want to achieve from your business you are selling the products and services both or a product and then after sale service but this is uh, for sure uh, clear that a business plan dusre business plan jaisa nahi ho sakta because every product is different every business is different even if it's the same business like e-commerce business or health technology business doing the same thing but the way a founder looks at a certain business makes it different from the other business plan uska business plan dusre company ke business plan se different hoga Uh, I have an edtech product, and then I have service-oriented company. Uh, so, should my business plan be selective or cover all? Look, edtech product is. So, I mean, one thing I would suggest to you people that don't be everywhere. You cannot solve the, you know, problem of whole education system, uh, education, yeah, health, yeah, koi bhi. even delivery system there are many parts of it you cannot solve each and every part of that value chain so make your product specific and focused and try to solve once one or two specific problems instead of trying to solve each and every problem so you know in, uh, remain focused and make a business plan based on your focus and uh, investors ko bhi aap usi tarah approach karenge jis tarah ki aap apna सोल्यूशन बनाएंगे प्लीज आंसर दिस टू सॉरी thank you so much uh, thank you everyone um, i think that's uh, time bhi ho gaya and uh, the, the questions have also finished uh, thank you once again for joining this session and thank you so much ali for inviting me to the session and giving me a chance to speak to the young founders thank you so much